place, a smile on every face. Children at play, time with family today. Someone fill my plate, homemade bread I can't wait. I can't get enough, I will always stay in touch with my Bahamaland, yeah. Rev Voice introduces Bahamaland, an unlimited nationwide calling plan for only $5 a month. So call home today and connect again with Bahamaland. Home never felt so close. The police commissioner livid over a wedding at a police station. A suspect arrested in connection with the discovery of a woman's body. The DNA calls for public disclosure. Plus, another major union speaks out against value-added tax. We've got those stories and a whole lot more tonight. I'm Vonique Toot, and NB12 starts now. Topping news tonight, Commissioner of Police Ellison Greenslade has condemned the marriage of a drug suspect and his bride at Central Police Station over the weekend. The commissioner called it an embarrassment to the police force and says four officers, including an assistant superintendent, have been placed on administrative leave. Jasmine Bonamy has the details. Hours after the story appeared in today's edition of the Nassau Guardian, a visibly upset commissioner of police responded, saying the marriage last weekend should never have occurred. The couple who had been planning a wedding for more than a year ended up saying I do inside the Central Police Station on Saturday. NB12 understands that the wedding occurred after the groom's family failed to get him released on police bail. He was married in an office at the station on Saturday with the permission of a senior policeman. Prior to the man's arrest, the two were scheduled to be married on Saturday morning. The newlywed Kendrick Tinker appeared before a magistrate today in relation to the seizure of 50 pounds of marijuana on Friday. Less than two hours after he was charged, Commissioner Greenslade held a press conference to address the matter. That's something very dastardly uh, took place at the Central Police Station here in Nassau on the weekend just past, actually on Saturday. Greenslade went on to say he was ashamed about the unauthorized ceremony, saying it was disturbing and out of order. He added that the officers who allowed the ceremony did not have his permission and furthermore, he says they violated police policy. This commissioner is totally embarrassed by what took place. This should never have happened and I'm still trying to come to terms with how what is reported in the public domain could have in fact happened. I am still trying to come to terms with that. Again, I indicate despite my best intentions and my instructions which were defied. It was contrary to policies and procedures of the Royal Bahamas Police Force, happened without the express permission of the Commission of Police, and I wish to indicate that prior to uh, the developments at Central Police Station on Saturday, I gave clear instructions to command level personnel in this force um, to ensure that the public might not lose any confidence in this force. No one in their right mind anywhere on the planet would recognize that there could be any semblance of order to having a person incarcerated whose liberties by law properly have been taken from them to be taken out of a police force cell and be allowed to consummate some marriage ceremony in a police station. That is a disgrace to the Bahamas, to the Royal Bahamas Police Force and everything good and decent that we stand for. I am not going to be a part of that. I am not a part of that, and I look you in the eyes and I tell you, it's out of order, it should not have happened, and it goes against everything that we have stood for from March 1st of 1840. Greenslade says as soon as he learned of the jailhouse marriage, he ordered an investigation into the matter. He added that four officers, including an assistant superintendent of police, a corporal and two constables were sent home and are currently on administrative leave pending an investigation. Greenslade says based on what their investigations have revealed so far, those officers will likely be facing internal charges that could result in them being kicked off the force. Those charges are very, very serious. 
and those charges could in fact um, uh, result in the loss of employment uh, for people concerned. Central Police Station is no stranger to controversy. Several officers were transferred in 2007 after they were accused of allowing drug dealers fighting extradition to have sex with their wives and girlfriends. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy. Attorney DeVar Francis, who represents the groom, says he commends the officers who facilitated the marriage and doesn't see what the big deal is. Francis spoke to our news team outside court this morning, arguing that his client has rights just like anyone else. I think there's enough crime <laughs> over the weekend for uh, them to focus on than for a wedding. Francis says placing those officers on administrative leave would be silly and just insists no laws were broken. The officers simply, the officers simply allowed persons to go in there um, to, say, to, to say two minutes, listen, I, I want to spend the rest of my life with you, and they, they left. And so it wasn't as if this was this big um, um, uh, walk up by the bride and she had a long trail behind her with 15 bridesmaids. No, I don't see anything. And like I said, the officers should be commended and I hope the powers that be would not be, like I said, uh, silly enough to reprimand those officers. According to Francis, Tinker was planning his wedding for more than a year. He said it is unfortunate his client is locked up, but he is in high spirits and so is his wife. The groom in this case and two other men were arraigned this morning on drug charges. Tinker appeared in the magistrate's court along with two other men, 26-year-old Devon Roll seen here in the green shirt and 36-year-old Elvardo Farrington in the blue shirt. The men were charged with possession of dangerous drugs with intent to supply and conspiracy to possess dangerous drugs with intent to supply. According to police, the trio was arrested Friday on Potter's Key Dock with 50 pounds of marijuana. Officers on mobile patrol arrested them around 7 a.m after they searched a package that arrived on a mail boat from Freeport, Grand Bahama. Officers from the mobile division were reportedly patrolling Potterski when they observed a male employee of a mail boat hand a package to two men. Police say the men then entered a waiting vehicle and drove off. Officers soon intercepted the vehicle and discovered a package containing over 50 pounds of marijuana. Tinker Roll and Farrington all pleaded not guilty to the drug charges as they appeared before Deputy Chief Magistrate Andrew Forbes. Tinker also faced an additional charge of possession of 33 forged $20 U.S. notes. He pleaded not guilty to that charge and elected to have the matter tried in a magistrate's court. As he headed inside court this morning, he shouted these words to a small crowd that had gathered. Freedom God. Tinker Roll and Farrington are due back in court on June 5th. They were remanded to Her Majesty's prisons. Lawyers for the trio say they plan to make a bail application to the Supreme Court this week. Authorities have confirmed that a 28-year-old man has been arrested in connection with yesterday's discovery of a woman's body. The body, which was in an advanced stage of decomposition, was discovered in a shallow grave more than 1,200 feet away from an abandoned house off Cowpen Road. There has been speculation it may be the body of a 24-year-old woman who was reported missing earlier this month. However, officer in charge of the Central Detective Unit, Superintendent Paul Rose, says officials are awaiting the results of DNA tests to determine the person's identity. Uh, we have, we've spoken to some persons yesterday. We can't say their family uh, because we don't know who the person is, but there were uh, some persons who had an interest in a relative that had gone missing and so obviously we had to meet with the, the whoever whomever had persons missing and so that's that's where we started and we have to get the process going with DNA. However he says officers are contacting other people who have reported loved ones missing. I spoke to one family yesterday and uh, you know we still have a uh, a few persons that are still outstanding are being reported missing and the investigators I left them at the office dealing with that and contacting persons this morning. Police are investigating an apparent drowning on Potterski Dock. Authorities say a fisherman believed to be in his late 20s or early 30s was reportedly diving for count this morning when he drowned. We spoke with the fisherman who discovered the victim's body. I feel bad, very bad because I know him from, from little boy. I feel very bad. Me and him used to work in the same boat. Alejandro Feliz says he was selling conch on Potterski Dock this morning when he and several other fishermen noticed that one of their colleagues hadn't resurfaced after going diving for conch. He says he plunged into the water in search of his longtime friend but couldn't find him at first. 
But then... Somebody go in the boat and say, see, see right there, see right there. I see it right there. Then I see the fence for coming. I tell her, feel right there, I can dive him up. So did one of you pull him out of the water or did police pull him up? No, no, I pull him out of the water. Feliz says the victim didn't appear to have any bruises. Officer in charge of the Central Detective Unit, Superintendent Paul Roll says it is believed the man drowned. His body was found under a fishing boat. Investigation so far reveals that this male may have been diving some conk to bring up to uh, begin their wake for the day. And he brought up one set and went back down and did not surface. Roll says the man worked on a boat docked at Potter's Key. After speaking with several fishermen, he says police have an idea of who he is, but did not release his identity. However, Felice says everyone called him Chucky. Roll says police do not suspect foul play at this stage. We're going to be transporting him to Princess Margaret Hospital where an, an autopsy will be held to determine exactly his cause of death. When NB12 returns, why the hotel union is opposed to value-added tax. Plus, the Democratic National Alliance calls for public disclosure. So stay with us.